Hello and welcome to the Extended Greg YouTube channel. I'm Greg and on today's show, we're gonna be building a temperature module. It's a soldering kit that we're gonna to assemble together. So stay tuned, we're about to get extended. So today we're gonna to be building the temperature module soldering kit. And this one's from the Ding Dong store. So, you know, <laughs> honestly, they're pretty fun. I like doing the soldering kits just because everything is already prepackaged. You already have all the parts that you need, so you don't need to search for anything. And realistically, you know, there's not really that much going on. They're very simple kits, so it's really relaxing. So I hope you enjoy going through this with me. Maybe it inspires you to even build it yourself. I'm gonna put a link down in the description that will actually take you to the Amazon product that I'm building here. So if you wanna buy it for yourself and build it for yourself, you're welcome to do that. And if you use that link, it'll help me out. So looking at the instructions that came with it, it has a picture of the actual device, looks very straightforward, and it has some operating instructions. On the back side, it has the packing list for what's included in the kit and talks about some of the product features. So this digital temperature alarm is designed based on the 51 single chip microcomputer and temperature sensor, which is the DS18B20, which is a very common digital temperature sensor. And the alarm kits have a wide measurement range and high accuracy. Temperature range is zero to 99 degrees Celsius or 32 to 210 degrees Fahrenheit and the accuracy is 0 0.1 degrees Celsius or <laughs> 0.18 of a degree Fahrenheit. Uh, it can only display Celsius. Temperature range on the alarm kit can be set and the function can also be turned off. When the module detects the current temperature is higher than the upper limit temperature value or lower than the lower temperature value, the system will automatically alarm. Then it covers the installation steps, so it talks about doing the resistors, everything else like that. But I don't think we need to go too crazy with this. It looks like there's only a handful of resistors, uh, 2.2K and 10K. Number of buttons, ICs, that's about it. So hopefully this is very straightforward. Looking at the board, uh, it is labeled very well. The silk screening is very clear, so I think that'll be just fine. The traces are actually very simple and very clear as well. So this is the actual microcontroller. It comes with a socket, which means we won't have to risk burning the microcontroller uh, since that one is actually pretty critical. So we wanna make sure that everything is going well with that. And then inside of the parts kit, outside of the DC power cable, which I'll put off to the side. Okay, so the first thing that we have is our DC input jack. And we'll put a picture in right here just to show everything in close up so you can see what I'm talking about. We then have a simple four pin header. We then have a multi resistor pack. And what these are is it's actually multiple resistors already installed and connected with a common lead. That way you can actually use both pretty much fewer holes to be able to act as resistors for things like LEDs, things of that nature. And in this case, since we have a display, we'll actually need this. It'll be very useful. And speaking of which, here is the display itself. This is uh, four seven segment displays with the uh, decimal point. And it just has a number of pins, which in this case look like they've gotten mangled <laughs> a little bit in the package, but I think it'll do just fine. Then we have a crystal oscillator. And this one looks like it's 12 megahertz. And the oscillator itself is used to drive the actual CPU to be able to determine and synchronize all of the aspects of the system. So as it's going through its calculations, everything else like that, all of the components attached to the CPU tick together and that way the bits line up. Next, we have a capacitor and this capacitor is 10 microfarads at 25 volts. We have three LEDs, we have three disk capacitors. We have one push on and push off button. We have a buzzer. It's a standard piezo buzzer, so nothing too special here. And then we have five push buttons. And these are just momentary buttons that are used just to do programming, set the various modes, everything else like that. So nothing too special there. And then we have quite a few transistors. And the transistors just act as switches. Not sure as of yet how they're going to be used, but 
maybe we'll be able to determine that as we go. But it's not really that important. I mean, everything's pre-wired through the circuit board traces, so there's not really a lot of guesswork involved as far as what actually goes to what. We'll see if we can figure it out as we go. And then we have two different values of resistors. And luckily, they're in two different quantities, so we won't have to test these. Uh, there's not a lot of components here. It's going to go very quick. So we'll speed it up as well just to make sure that the soldering and everything else doesn't get monotonous. And the nice thing is the parts list that it, they gave us actually has uh, indications of which resistor values are which and where they go. So that's really helpful. All right, so we're ready to get started. So the first thing that it says in the installation steps is to install the 2.2K resistors at 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15. So on our board, and we have our resistors. These are the 2.2s. We'll go ahead and pre-bend our leads. And we'll just go ahead and press it in and just bend the leads a little bit. This is all through hole technology, so it's very easy and straightforward. Nothing like uh, surface mount technology, which would be quite a bit more finicky. You see the little square box that points between two pads, and that's actually where the resistor goes. We don't want to use any of the other pads that will be used by, for example, the transistor, which in this case is a triode or anything else like that. It's always important to follow the silk screen when they have it, and this one is very well labeled. So there we have the four, four of the 2.2K resistors installed. We have two more that we need to do. So one of them is R13 and R15. So we see R15 there and R13 here. All right, so that's all of our 2.2K resistors. So let's go ahead and solder these before we put the 10K resistors. That way we could trim the legs to keep the forest of leads down. And in this case, I have a fume extractor. That way I don't have to breathe in these fumes. And that will just help out a lot in terms of making sure the environment stays healthy where I'm working here. And I'm just using a little Weller pencil soldering iron. It's attached to a base station. Alright, so that is all 12 leads. We'll go ahead and trim this. Just verify that our solder connections are good. So far looking pretty good, and we didn't accidentally close up any of the other holes, which will make inserting those components later a lot easier. So next we have the 10K resistors in R14 and R16. Right there's R14. And right here is R16. Let's go ahead and solder this as well. So this is what it looks like so far. So we're getting there. Next, it says to install the four pin socket at J1, which is this header right here. Uh, I gotta tell you, I don't like that <laughs> because realistically, it's gonna be standing up pretty high and I think we do have some lower profile components that we'd want to install first in order to make sure everything sits flat. So we're going to skip past that and come back. So next it wants us to install the 10 microfarad capacitor, which is this right here. And if you look on the side, you'll notice that there's actually a stripe and that stripe indicates the polarity. I do like it when they put the stripe and the silk screen, but in this case they have the plus and minus. And if you look, the actual side of the capacitor says minus on the white stripe. It's also the shorter of the two legs. And actually looking at it, this is about 
<laughs> the same size as the header. So we're gonna go ahead and just put in the header at the same time and solder these together. All right, everything is sitting nicely. So next we're gonna install 30 picofarad capacitors at C2 and C3. And those are our little disc capacitors right here. And these are some of the shorter components that I was talking about, but I think it'll be fine. Next, we're going to install the first LED at position D2, and that's the alarm, or alum as it says, but it's the alarm. And what it says is the longer pin is positive, which faces down. So we place that according to the instructions. Make sure it seats all the way. And then we'll solder that as well. Next, it's asking us to put the crystal oscillator at Y1. We're gonna put it so the text matches the actual labeling on the board, but it technically doesn't really matter. It's still gonna oscillate either way. Moving right along. So next we're gonna install the triodes. And the triodes are these transistors. So there's quite a few of them, it's like seven, likely to drive the seven segment display. So we're gonna put them in matching the direction of the diagram. And with these, we do have to spread the legs a little bit in order to make sure that they fit, just cause it looks like it's not exact. So they may actually not sit down all the way, but we'll at least try and make them sit straight. I am noticing that there's a difference. So that was almost a mistake. So if you look at this, this is actually our temperature sensor right here. So it's very important in, to make sure that you're paying attention to the labels, even though they're microscopic in size. We wanna make sure that everything is going on right, otherwise it's not gonna work. So now we have the four 9012 triode transistors in here. So let's go ahead and solder those. Okay, so we have all of those trimmed up and there's no shorts or anything like that. Uh, so we have the four 9012 triodes soldered in place so we can move on. And the next step is we need to install four pieces of the button keys to set, decrement, add, and reset. These four buttons right here. Nice thing about these particular style of buttons is they actually pop right into place. And while we're doing this, we do have a 9012 that actually goes right here as well. And I notice in the instructions, it does mention that one. It's not just the four. So let's do all of these at once. So now we have the buttons in place, everything's there. We got the other triode. So next it's calling for the DC power jack, which goes right here. So we place that in, quick solder job. Next we have the self locking switch, which is this. So it presses in, presses out. It's one of the taller components on the board. All right, that soldering is complete. So we're getting close. Next, it wants the speaker, and the speaker does have a polarity. All right, and it is marked right here as a plus sign. So we're going to match those together to install it. So now we're going to install the 103 network resistor that will go right here this one's going to be a little bit tricky so why normally you'd go from 
lowest height to tallest height. But we're just gonna bend some leads to hold it in. Yeah, so this network resistor has a dot that actually indicates which one is the common pin to all of the resistors on the particular network. So you wanna make sure that that's on the common pad when you install it. In this case, it actually makes the notation that the text points towards the IC socket, but it also has a square pad indicating what that particular socket is. So we do have it installed correctly, but I did wanna mention that in case you're building this for yourself. So next we're gonna install the socket. We wanna match up this little indentation right here with the indentation on the socket itself. It just helps us in the future to be able to line up the CPU if we have it in the correct orientation. And this one's gonna take a second to actually solder. But the key thing is we wanna make sure it's being held down firmly against the PC board. So we're just gonna hold it and apply pressure and just do a pin in each corner just to make sure that it is actually sitting flat and check it before we solder all 40 pins. So that's one side done. Let's do the other side. Okay, so that's all 40 pins of the socket itself. Went very easy, so let's see what's next. Now it says we wanna install the uh, actual microcontroller, but we're gonna wait till the end to do that just for protection of the chip. Just cause we're touching it here, even though this is an anti-static mat, we didn't, don't necessarily wanna be futzing with this while this is actually uh, got a critical chip in there. So moving on from there, we'll come back to that at the end, is we wanna install the temperature sensor. This one actually has them all in a row. So we're gonna place that in there, throw down some solder. It looks like they gave us a few extra spare parts. I'm not sure why, but the only thing that we actually have left on this board are the seven segment displays. So let's pull this off, the protective foam that didn't really protect anything and it is a mangled mess of fury. Normally I would use a pair of needle nose pliers, I just don't happen to have them at the location that I'm at right now. I'm a bit too lazy to go get them, so we're gonna make do. All right, so they're straight-ish. Let's try and insert it again. Once again, polarity matters. Also the numbers, we don't want them to show up upside down. So it shows where the, how the digits are pointing with the decimal points, so we're gonna match that. All right, fits right in there. Yeah, we're gonna do the same thing that we did for the socket and just hold it while we tack two pins, just to make sure it's not moving. So now we see all of the spaces are populated. They did give us a couple of extra parts, but now we can insert the CPU. Again, we're observing the notch to the notch, and we're gonna try and make this go down as evenly as possible to avoid bending any pins. And of course the issue is we actually need to bend these pins a little bit so they're straight. and that will make a huge difference. But we're touching the pins. I don't have an anti-static strap. And realistically, I should have an anti-static strap to prevent damage to the microprocessor. So we've seated the microprocessor fully. There's no pins hanging over anywhere. So it should be good. So now it's complete. So we can plug this in and see exactly how it goes. All right, the power's not on, but there's no smoke. That's a good sign. So let's press the power. All right, we see it says it's 30.4 degrees C. We put our finger on the sensor, the temperature should rise. If 
we take our finger off the sensor, it should fall. And right off the bat, I do notice a slight flaw with this particular design where the thermal sensor is right next to the CPU, which could potentially generate heat and skew the result. So obviously this isn't going to be used for any critical applications, but if it was, that would be something you would want to keep in mind when you're designing something like this. So I'm going to keep the uh, piezo emitter, uh, the actual speaker, covered just for our everybody's sake. But let's see what this does. So the high is 38 degrees. We're going to make that 32. The low is 5. Which I'm not sure how we're going to do that, but let's say 25. Right? So let's touch this, see if we can raise the temperature. And we just need to raise it to 32 and the alarm should sound. So we just hit reset and that cleared the alarm condition because it reset the defaults. So I do believe actually after you lose power to this, it just defaults to the internal programming. So it doesn't actually have any real memory um, or at least uh, unpowered non-volatile memory to store whatever setting you put in here. So, but it's a nice little, it's a nice little piece of kit and we can turn it off, we can unplug it, but it does indeed work after all of that assembly. So very fun. And there's a few other things that can be done with this. It looks like you can add it to the particular uh, external devices by using this header to be able to trigger an action like turning on a fan, for example. So if you wanted to build your own greenhouse thermostat, uh, this kit looks like it would do that. Now, granted, you'd want to waterproof it somehow just because of high humidity and everything it doesn't do well with electronics. but. Realistically, you could build your own from the ground up and just solder it all yourself. That way you, you know, you know how it works and, and build your own little uh, intelligent control to be able to manage the health of plants. Thanks for watching the video today. If you'd like to see more videos like this, check out this playlist right here. Also, if you like the video, be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below and let me know what kind of soldering projects you want to see me do next. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And then hit that notification bell. That way you know the next time we're getting extended. So until then, take care.